Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Paulina is greeted warmly at home. Abe thanked Steve and Kayla at their townhouse for taking him in after he had lost his memory almost a year earlier. Steve consented to meet Abe and Kayla at Paulina's impromptu get-together later. Abe and Kayla made their way to the hospital. Paulina was looking forward to going back home in her hospital room. Chanel attempted to quiet Paulina, who communicated help that she would be okay following her well-being alarm. Abe and Kayla showed up without further ado thereafter. Everybody was glad as Paulina was rolled out of the clinic room. Leo considered various headlines to describe Clyde's escape from Statesville at the spectator office. Chad developed upset when he saw that Leo was being hard with respect to Clyde. Leo apologized to Chad, who said that the picture of finding Abigail killed was something he could always remember. Chad added that he trusted Clyde would be caught before Clyde killed once more. Leo felt for Chad, who requested that Leo cover Paulina's delivery from the medical clinic. Leo concurred and thanked Chad for having faith in him. After Leo left, Chad streaked back to visiting Abigail's grave and the words he'd addressed her on the one-year commemoration of her homicide. By the medical caretaker's station at the emergency clinic, a group of correspondents halted Paulina and asked about her recuperation. Paulina was asked to explain what had transpired by Leo, who was one of the reporters. Paulina gave a concise assertion where she offered thanks for the help of everybody in Salem. Abe and Kayla accompanied Paulina out of the clinic. Leo promised to contact Paulina again. At the Salem police headquarters, Jada let Harris know that she'd attempted to visit him at his room over the Brady Bar prior however had found the room vacant. Harris was instructed by Jada to inform her of his location. Harris streaked back to having intercourse to Ava. Harris was hush, however he in the end conceded that he had gone through the night with Ava. Jada said that she definitely disliked Ava and Harris being together. Jada whined finally about Ava's presence in Harris's life, and she said that Harris and Ava's relationship was an attack against the Salem PD's overarching set of rules. Harris retorted, if anyone knows about ignoring the code of conduct, Jada, it's you. Harris said Jada was being dishonest. Noting that she had arrested her sister months earlier, Jada pushed back. Jada blamed Harris for defying the guidelines, and she told him not to forfeit himself for Ava. Back at the observer office, Chad was frightened when a smashed Stefan showed up. Chad inquired as to why Stefan was intoxicated at 8 in the morning. Stefan inquired if Chad had ever felt a deep sense of regret. What went down between Stefan and Abigail had been on his mind for a number of years, Stefan admitted. Stefan started to apologize to Chad. You didn't deserve that, that's what I need to say to you. Abby also did not. She was a wonderful soul who was so kind and savvy. Kind nature. And me? Stefan said solemnly, I was a selfish, arrogant fool. Stefan moved the discussion to Clyde's break. Furthermore, presently, the bastard who took Abigail's life is back in the city, and I can't envision how that affects you. I really want you to be aware. Weston's escape had nothing to do with me. None at all, Stefan declared. Stefan's comment confused Chad. Stand by a moment. Why how could I believe that you had a say in Clyde getting away? Chad inquired. Stefan evaded the inquiry, and he said that he cherished Chad. Chad advised Stefan to snap out of it. Stefan said that he was at that point snapping out of it and that he needed to recognize the cold hard reality. Chad inquired about Stefan's intent. Stefan muttered something about chess moves. Chad stayed confounded. Stefan said just that Chad had given him clearness. On out, Stefan alluded to Chad as the great Demera, and he added that Chad motivated Stefan to be a superior man. Stefan advised Chad to be careful, and the two siblings embraced. Stefan responded that he was as lucid and sober as he could be when Chad asked if he could drive. After Stefan left, Chad sat alone at his work area. Chad gazed at a family Christmas representation of his last Christmas with Abigail, Thomas, and Charlotte. I miss you. 
Okay, must return to work, Chad stated. Chad read a headline after opening his laptop. Killer, drug master Clyde Weston escapes from jail, Chad read so anyone might hear before furiously closing the PC. Chad shut his eyes and took a full breath. Chad said with a sharp voice, I worked so hard to try to purge that son of a bitch from my brain, and, oh, I hope he rots in hell. Back at the Salem police headquarters minutes after the fact, Jada was proceeding to address Harris about Ava when Stefan showed up. Stefan said that he was there to hand himself over for drug dealing and tax evasion. Stefan added that Clyde had constrained him to push drugs through the bistro and to launder cash. Jada attempted to persuade Stefan to concede that Ava had laundered the cash. Stefan said that he had acted alone. Stefan stated, and when Ava discovered what I was up to, I ordered her to keep her mouth shut, or the consequences would be dire. Stefan added that Ava had no part in anything unlawful. So, do you want to call my brother, the DA? Stefan stated to Harris and Jada, I'm prepared to make a deal. At Abe and Paulina's penthouse, Steve and Johnny were excited that Abe and Paulina were moving back in together. Johnny noticed that Steve and John had tracked down Trip and Wendy, and he asked how Clyde had the option to escape from Statesville. Johnny said that whoever helped Clyde escape would find a warm place in hell. Before Johnny entered the kitchen, Steve worked to change the subject. Minutes after the fact, Steve appeared to be occupied when Johnny returned and referenced inflatables and different adornments both of them had set up. Abe, Janelle, Paulina, and Kayla walked in at that exact moment. They were excited by seeing the improvements. Kayla credited Steve and Johnny for their assistance with the impromptu get-together. With a warm smile, Abe and Paulina noted that everyone had a lot to be thankful for. Kayla saw Steve, who appeared uneasy, nearby. Kayla inquired about Steve's issues. Steve was hush, and he advised Kayla that it was nothing to stress over. All of a sudden, Leo entered with a container of blossoms for Paulina, who was unmoved with Leo's signal. Leo attempted to compliment Paulina, who ultimately consented to concede Leo a ten-minute meeting. Paulina added that Leo had composed amazing pieces for the observer about the historical backdrop of the Horton House, as well as the town's festival of MLK Day. Paulina's words touched Leo, and he called Paulina a treasure. Everyone received celebratory mimosas when Chanel returned. Paulina mentioned having love and faith, and she agreed with Leo when he said that her recovery had been miraculous. Main concern. I got a subsequent change, and I intend to capitalize on it. I got a triumph as a result of this strange supernatural occurrence, and, with the previously mentioned love and confidence, I accept we can defeat anything, Paulina said. During the toast, each gathering person raised a glass. Paulina. Paulina was adored by Leo, Steve, Kayla, Abe, Chanel, and Steve. Leo developed profound when he said that it was a distinction to be in Paulina's presence. I am aware that I usually provide the comedic relief. That is my M.O., to make individuals giggle. In any case, for the present, I will sideline my astounding funny bone to say, vigorously, that you are a splendid city hall leader, however you are a jewel of a person, Leo expressed lovingly to Paulina. Chanel joked that Leo was a pleasant individual when he put his funny bone on the sideline. Leo expressed his gratitude to Chanel and praised Paulina as a hero. Abe concurred and stated that Paulina was his family's light.